Now, we've got Snort, which is an intrusion detection system. There are several other open source intrusion detection systems, including Suricata. So we're going to take a look at Suricata. Now, what they say is this is a high-performance network intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention system, and network security monitoring engine. So it's highly scalable, according to the developers, does protocol identification, does file identification, and there are a number of other good features. One of the things about Suricata is, as we'll see a little bit later on, that it actually uses the Snort rule set. And that really makes it convenient. If you're familiar with Snort, then Suricata will actually work pretty well for you as well. It does support all of the operating systems probably that you will run across. And it uses a YAML config file, so it's both human and machine readable, well commented and documented support for including other files. It's got TCP IP engines, probably not surprisingly including the ability to decode tunnels and have IPv6 as well as IPv4, of course. And there is the detection engine and a number of output options as well. As I said earlier, that it actually uses the Snort rule set, and when we get it installed, we can take a look at the rules, and you'll see that they are actually the Snort rules that get installed with Suricata. Again, if you're familiar with Snort and the Snort rules, that will actually work pretty well. So we're going to just take a look here, and we've got Suricata. Now, the thing about Suricata is you could install just the Suricata that is available with your distribution. In this case, it's an Ubuntu distribution, or if you're really feeling like you want to stay up to date on everything, then what you could do is download the latest version and do an install by hand, and then you will get the latest and greatest piece of software. This is going to be not the latest and greatest, but it's going to be functional and do really what we want it to do. So again, I can install it just like this using apt-get on my Ubuntu system, where if you want to actually install the current generation with all of the latest features, you could download the source code and install it that way. We've got Suricata installed at this point, and so I'm going to go into the configuration directory and we can take a look at what actually is in place. The default configuration file is going to be this one right here. So let's just take a look at Suricata Debian.yaml. As it mentions, this is a YAML configuration file, and YAML is a recursive acronym for YAML ain't markup language. So this is not a markup language like, for example, HTML or XML would be. It is a way of doing configurations, among other things. And again, this is written in YAML. We'll see the syntax, which is pretty simple, coming up here. We've got some schedulers, and you can see that flows are assigned to threads in a round-robin fashion. Suricata uses multiple threads to deal with the amount of input that it's got to handle. So there are multiple threads, and then Suricata does the scheduling of the different network flows attached to threads, and you can configure how that works. We've got the user and group that it runs at, the process identification file, daemon directory, and so forth. Now, if we keep going down, here we've got where it configures the outputs. The fast way is to do the fast output, like fast.log from snort. And this is enabled. You can see the fast configuration is enabled. File name is fast.log, and then it's going to append you've got the ability to configure the file type. You can see on the left here, we've got the name of the property, and then there's a colon, and then this is the actual value. You'll also notice that there are lines right there that indicate the start of a set of configuration. So just the little dash indicates that there's a configuration setting here that's kind of complex in nature. It's not just a simple one-line configuration. 
Now we've got the extensible event format that's logged there as well. We can keep scrolling down and find other settings. Like for example, this one, Snort now uses a unified two log file. And in order to read the unified two log file, you would use the program Barnyard2. Suricata has the ability to output to the unified two log file. We can generate HTTP requests, we can generate TLS logs, DNS logs. There are a number of output log settings that you can see in the Suricata config file here. As with a lot of open source software that runs on Linux systems, the configurations can be really dense. And particularly when you're talking about a piece of software like Suricata that does a lot of things, there are going to be a lot of settings that you can create here. This really gets deep into some of the ways that you're going to be monitoring. So for example, we've got flow settings here. So the network flows, meaning the different conversations that are going, you can monitor those or have settings for how Suricata handles those and be able to do different things with them in terms of how Suricata manages them. So maybe it can be more efficient or take up less resources or give it more resources if you've got them on your system. So we can also handle VLANs here, and then it will do flow timeout and handle a number of different protocols as well. Again, you can see that we've got the configuration file here, suricata-debian.yaml, and you're going to need to take a look at that to make sure that it's doing what you expect it to do. So the other configuration setting that I want to look at here is the configuration in Etsy default. Right here, it's set to run equals no. And what that does is it tells the init system whether Suricata is actually going to be able to run or not. So if I were to actually try to start this up using the init script, it says no, and so it would error out on me. So I can just show you init.d Suricata start. And because that's set for no, it would generate an error, and that would be in a log file indicating that this run equals no was set, and you should really go change that setting to be yes if you want to run it. Now, it does have multiple listen modes. Right now, it's set in an FQ, and you can configure the interface that it listens on if you're in PCAP mode, and then the Q number to listen on if you're in NFQ. So there are a couple of places that you can look when you start doing your Suricata configuration. Of course, the first one is going to be in Etsy Suricata, where you're going to manipulate the YAML file based on your needs. But perhaps the more important one is to make sure you go into Etsy default and then set run equal to yes so that you can actually start up Suricata. Now we've got Suricata installed and we want to run it. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to change the default settings file. We're going to go to Etsy default Suricata. And what I need to do primarily is I need to change this to yes. The configuration file, that's okay. I'm going to leave the default listen mode alone. That's going to be okay. The rest of these, the iFace setting is going to be okay because we're not actually using PCAP mode. So this variable is just simply going to get ignored. And then the PID file is okay. That's typical. You're going to put the process ID file into var run. So I'm going to save that out. And then I can take a look at the Suricata man page. And we've got all of the options for how you are going to run it. The configuration file, we're going to use minus C and then minus I for interface, indicating the interface that we want to collect our data on. And we've got the read file, so we could use Suricata with a PCAP file, as you can see here, live or offline. So if I've got a PCAP file from something that I've grabbed using, for example, TCP dump or Wireshark, I can run Suricata against that using the signatures that Suricata knows about. We've got the QID for NFQ signatures, 
which is the path to the signatures file, log directory, and then whether you want to run it as a daemon or not. Now we do have an init file. So I can go into etsy init.d and you can see that we've got the Suricata service script right there. So the easiest way to do this is simply going to be etsy init.d Suricata and then start. That starts the Suricata service. So at this point, we should have Suricata running and it should be capturing data. Now, the one thing that I do want to take a look at here is if we were to actually use PCAP mode rather than NFQ, I would want to make sure that I had the right interface. In my case, the right interface is going to be ENS33 rather than the ETH0, which was in the Etsy default Suricata file. I need to make sure that I am telling Suricata what my correct network interface is so that when it starts trying to listen and grabs hold of the interface device, it actually grabs the right one. If I've got ETH0 configured rather than ENS33, then of course it's not going to be able to grab the device. We're going to get an error and Suricata is not actually going to run. So we're not going to be doing any sort of network intrusion detection, even though we might think that we are. We're going to take a look at the Suricata rules and I'm going to go into Etsy Suricata and then the rules directory. And we've got a collection of rule files here. So, Let's just take a look at app layer events rules. And again, you can see that this looks very similar to the snort rules. So this first one, for example, we're going to alert IP, any, any, meaning any source, any port to any destination IP address with any port. The message is going to be Suricata app layer mismatch protocol, both directions. We're looking for an established flow and then the app layer event is going to be app layer mismatch protocol both directions. Flow int is going to be app layer dot anomaly dot count. And then we're looking for a protocol command decode. So we've got a number of details around this particular event. And this is going to really increment our app layer anomaly count every time we actually collect something as well. So that's what this indicates right here. So we're incrementing the app layer anomaly count by one every time we collect something in addition to the alert. So that's the app layer and we've got HTTP events as another one here that we just want to take a quick look at. Again, we've got a number of rules here. They are identical to kind of how you would structure a snort rule. These are Suricata rules, as you can see in the message, rather than snort, but the structure is essentially the same. And again, what we're doing in some cases is we're actually taking a variable and incrementing it so that Suricata can pay attention to some of the events in a more global manner rather than just single events happening. We're actually keeping account of some of those events. But again, we've got a case where you've got the protocol and then we've got the IP address and port on the source side and the IP address and the port on the destination side. And then beyond that, we've got the actual definition for the event in terms of what it is that Suricata is looking for in order to match on this particular alert. So there are a number of rules. And of course, once you get the hang of it, if you really want and get really ambitious, you can start generating your own rules. Or of course you can use the Suricata rules that just come by default with the software.